Hello, everybody. Hello out there in podcast slash YouTube world slash Stitcher slash wherever you see us or hear us. Here we are. I am Jason, and of course, we are with. I am Craig. All right. So as you know, if you didn't know, you should know because this is and the one and the only Bunny Rabbit's Hole. We like to take a different theme every week. And what we do here at the Bunny Rabbit's Hole is we explore that theme until each and every little topic comes up and it inspires us to go down a rabbit's hole. We go down that rabbit's hole until we explore it furtherly. And then we get brought back to the big, back to the main theme. I fucked a lot of that up. No, no cleaner. <laughs> so what we do here is we talk about a main theme, then we go on rants, we come back to the main theme, and that's it. That's the bunny rabbit's hole. So end of ex- uh, the episode. So thanks and thanks for enjoying it. Uh, we'll see you <laughs> next. Right. All right. Yes. Well, actually, Craig, I guess we have to do a little bit of a uh, housekeeping. Uh, yes. On um, each one of these episodes, like Jason said, we we discover, we we pick a topic, we research it, blah blah blah. We research both sides, not just what fits our narrative, but both sides. Plus, we include our opinions, and our opinions can be somewhat offensive at times. So, if you don't like that, get to step in because we don't care. Exactly, because this is entertainment, and as inter- all entertainment, not all entertainment is loved by everyone. I mean, some of the greatest shows in history were not liked by a lot of great critics. So with that being said, let's get started. It's the Bunny Rabbit's Hole. Craig, would you please tell us what today's theme is? Today's theme is brought to you by the Wild Wild Outdoors. And it is Bigfoot, Yeti, Uh Bombable Snowman. (laughs) Squat, 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 squat. (laughs) There's a squat in them woods. Yep. And I would have to say, you know, Bigfoot has been seen all over the world. I mean, there's... Okay, I want to do this real quick. Yeah, For those ahead. that are watching on YouTube, yes, it's Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. My coffee cup is a Yeti. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, so Bigfoot has been seen all around the world. And, you know, he has... He, she, it has been captured on several different devices being filmed. I, I, there is just literally tons and tons and tons of information you can go through on the internet. I mean, you can just get on YouTube and spend 17 days just watching Bigfoot, doc, you know, documentaries. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I forget what comedian said it, but he goes, after watching all this footage, I'm just convinced that Bigfoot itself is just blurry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forgot who said that, but it, that stuck with me. So, and I brought this point up in a different podcast, but with the level of technology we have today, if you can't get a good picture of something that you see, it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, pretty much, uh, pretty much, because if you think about it, you are under surveillance 24-7. No matter where you go, you go to the ATM, you go, from the time you get out of your car to go up to the ATM, to walk into the store, to buy your beer, to come back out to the store, you've been on like 18 different cameras. Right, and then you go home and you sit in front of your laptop and you're being watched on there too. Exactly, because we're, what, we're being watched on our laptop Actually, this is kind of spooky. They're watching us on our laptops as we're watching each other on our laptops while (laughs) others are watching them watching us watching us on a laptop. (laughs) Fuck! (laughs) That really degraded quickly. (laughs) So I will say this about – I want to throw this part out there about not capturing – I'm going to play devil's advocate about not – uh, capturing Bigfoot on it. So there's been several instances within the last couple of decades where creatures that we thought were extinct for millennia have randomly appeared on on video footage. Or like like, like the Mega Mouse shark that just washed up on shore. Right. I, exactly. Oh uh, like I, the that's a perfect example. Another example I was gonna I was gonna give was 
they were doing a lecture about the Nautilus, which you, if you don't know what the Nautilus is, it's more than an extra piece of exercise equipment. It's like a little seashell crustacean that floats in the sea, thought it was extinct for almost a million years. And as they're fucking giving a talk about creatures, past creatures from the underworld, and they're talking about the Nautilus, a live feed from a robot sub that was in at near the bottom of the, the ocean, a fucking Nautilus for real floats past the camera. Oh, Jesus. And they went, whoa, whoa, whoa. And so they had to pan the camera. Yeah, it was, they, they found the first Nautilus that was actually alive, that, which something that they've only seen in fossils up until this is like 10 years ago. Okay. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that Bigfoot has just not been captured on film because things like the Nautilus, however, the expanse of forest in the Pacific Northwest or, you know, the, the mountains of the Himalayas or these other, or, you know, the, the, the Northern territories of Canada. Yes, they are not as explored as well as other parts of our country, but they're not like the fucking bottom of the ocean. Okay. Right. They're out there. People are in those woods. Yes. So with all that being said, I am going to introduce us to the very first known documented footage of Bigfoot. All right. All right. The time is 1967. The area is Northern California, and the person is Roger Patterson. Now, Roger Patterson had found these tracks on his land that okay. were just huge. And they had like human-like qualities to it. And he cast plasters of these, these footprints. And he had tons of those. But he was determined that he was going to ca capture this thing on, on film. So he started practicing with his horse where he would jump off his horse real quick, grab a camera, and start filming something. So now him and some of his buddies, they're out riding a horse. And he's got his camera with him. And something startles the horse. The horse rears back dislodges him from the horse he jumps up grabs his camera and then he sees what it is and this is where we get our first footage of a female bigfoot walking across the screen now it's i mean it was when they zoom in on it and they cleared up the quality of it and everything like that you can see its breasts so you knew it was female okay um but um, you've seen this footage haven't you yeah yeah i mean we've i remember seeing it when i was a kid but now, this footage, at the time it came out, everybody was like, bullshit, it's somebody in a gorilla costume, blah, 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 excuse, excuse, the shit isn't happening because we don't believe it, so it can't be real, but we'll believe in a fake being in the sky. Um, anyways. <laughs> we got to get a dig at religion. I love it. <laughs> so, um, within the last several years, that footage has been analyzed by professionals, and they have found there's been no tampering with it. They went and talked to people that did makeup at the time. Like, they talked to the guy who did um, ex the Planet of the Apes movies, uh -huh. who did the makeup for them. And he said that at that time when that footage was done, we didn't have those kind of costumes. We didn't have anything that – he's like, that would – that would. Well, that you said this was, what, 1967? 67. So, okay, to that point, let's think about – the creatures that were in the horror films back then we were looking at like live like um was it uh, uh the night of the shrew it was a movie about giant shrews that came through and ate people and then there was the night of the lupus which was about bunnies they used like little bunnies they like actually instead of like computer animated them or used claymation or whatever they used like real animals that were like really, really fucking tiny and they blew them up on the screen. So they used like this old ass uh, uh, film cropping techniques to make big creatures. But you remember, look, remember the early Godzilla movies, which were right around that same time period. You yeah. got a man in a fucking suit that's obviously rubber wrestling around with another man who's in a costume that's obviously rubber. Right. So, just think of the time period compared to the monster movies of that time. If right. the monster movies of that time had the effects to build a costume like that, they would have done it. 
Right. Yeah. And like the, that um, costume artist said that if they had something like that at that time period, it would have cost like $20,000 to make it. But he's like, the materials weren't available to make something as intricate. I mean, because you, when the, the creature's arm is swinging, you can see the hair moving with it that's dangling yeah. down from it. You know, right. it's swinging in the wind. <laughs> they would have had to make that with like real wigs. Right. And at, the, at that time, they didn't have anything like that. Yeah. And not to mention that the arms, like, okay, being an artist, I have to study anatomy a lot. Mm -hmm. Your arms, your fingertips, when you go put your arms straight down, will come mid-thigh. Yeah. Now, the, the Bigfoot's arms go below their knees. Right. Right. You know, so that's another, I mean, you look at, and you're looking at the, the photo after it's been clear, cleaned up and as, um, what's this guy's name? Uh, as Jeff Medlam, a PhD, a professor of anatomy and anthropology, I don't know at what um, university, but he is a Bigfoot e expert because he studied them for years. But he said, you know, when they cleaned it up, you can see the muscles moving on, in the shoulder blades and stuff like that as the creature's moving. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, you can, when you, when it's cleaned up, you can see all this stuff and go, they can't fake that. Not in yeah. that time period. Today, yes, we could in a heartbeat. Yeah. But it, back then, no. With, um, I'm trying to find it right now. There's, God damn, I can't find it right now. There's, so there was recently, there was a couple of horror films where, um, is a woman there was this really creepy fucking long-armed creature uh woman in this one fucking movie i can't remember what it's called right now i can't seem to find it right now on 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 google either but uh they wanted to cgi this character okay and it's it, it like comes out and like ah, it's fucking creepy as shit but right they wanted a CGI, but it looked too cheesy. But they found this man with a syndrome. He's like, it's almost like gigantic, uh, you know, gigantism type of thing. Right. But it, but he's got like extremely long arms and legs, and he's skinny as hell. But they found this dude to play the part. They put like saggy boobs on him and stuff. But it turned out to be even creepier shit. But that was a real human, and he wasn't wearing fur. And it was in a closed set. And so that was the facts that was hap that was allowed to happen with today's makeup to make right. it creepy as shit. So back in 67, no, it, it, it wasn't, you couldn't have done it. No, it wasn't possible. And, you know, I, since then I've gone on and I've saw, I've watched just footage after footage after footage of supposed Bigfoot, you know, Bigfoot's caught on film. Some of them, I'm like, yeah, bullshit. Some of them, I'm like, you know, I, I, I think that could be it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, there was, I watched this video and really wish I had that time back. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is yelling out his window because he's seeing the glow of eyes at an area where nobody could be you know, it's too high up. And I'm just like, there is nothing proven in this video. Yes. Your dogs are afraid to go outside. It could be a fucking wolf. It could be anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, f I found the dude that I was talking about. Um, the name is uh, his, I'm going to slaughter his last name. It's a Spanish name. His name is Javier. I think it's Botet. Uh, okay. and he's got something called, Marfan syndrome, which it, just, it contorts his long legs. He contorts his uh, limbs. So he's okay. like fucking freaky as shit. But he's turned that into a career. He's been in, uh, mo he's, he was in the movie Slender Man that just came out recently. He's been Alien Covenant. Um, he's been in a bunch of different spooky ass movies. Nah, Beneath the Waters. So, but he, is an anomaly. He's just got this long ass neck and these really thin arms and stuff. 
he could not play a big foot woman because he's he's tall, he's but he's lanky and he's not furry like. Right, and these creatures. I mean, like that creature in that film. I swear to God, her shoulders had to be three and a half to four feet wide. See, that wow. You know that is for a human being that is impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, and especially if back then, if you were making a costume, there's no way you can make it that big. Right. They would have to carry it. So. I'm glad you said that because uh, the I found this thing that was talking about the average uh, size of uh, Bigfoot is a minimum of it's between six foot nine and eight foot two is really the range that people are seeing this and some of their footprints have been as as long as 24 inches long and eight inches wide. Wow. So, if you're not familiar with what two feet is, it's <laughs> about the size of an average two-year-old. <laughs> right. You know, so that's their foot. Right. That's why they're called big foot. Right. Big ass feet. But uh, so just the enormity of the creature that we're referring to, even if you were, if you had the capability and the you know the the know-how to create a costume like this there wasn't channels to make your money back like there is today if you were right. to spend that kind of money on creating a costume today you could create a youtube channel you could create some buzz you could create a bunch of stuff and you might be able to make your money back from creating a costume like that back then you could sell your footage to um, World Weekly News or the National Enquirer or something like that, but it was it it was slim pickings. It wasn't yeah. as easy to you know there wasn't as many marketing channels to try to get your money back for especially like he was saying twenty thousand dollars to create a costume like that, and then right. you, know, you know so. We'll just say that we'll say that that uh, that footage is a maybe, probably. It I'm was, going with it's it's for real. I yeah I do too. <laughs> you know, um, and I found something really interesting. And um, again, I'm going back to that that scientist, the uh, Jeff Meldrum. Now, he had gone and looked at the cast made by Patterson and looked at other casts made by people who mm -hmm. are, you know, obviously saying this is Bigfoot. And he found something really significant that he says is proof that Bigfoot exists. Okay. Okay. And anybody who's seen a Bigfoot says it's Simeon, you know, looks like a giant ape, you know, what do they call them? Skunk monkeys down in Florida. Yeah. Or skunk apes. Skunk apes. Uh, but you know, but there's there's one thing he's finding in all these casts, and that's the ridges in the flesh of the foot, you know, the friction ridges. Yeah. All right. He compared them to simians and to human. Now, oh. a simian's uh, ape or chimpanzee or whatever, their ridges um, run diagonally across the foot. Now, humans, they run side to side across the foot. Okay. These ones run up and down with the foot. Oh, weird. So he said it's not possible for it to be an ape. It's not possible for it to be a human. It's some species we have never discovered. Huh. Because uh, the no. only people that have feet like we have, are only people, only creatures that have feet like us would be like apes. I guess you might want to say maybe raccoons, but still they got the claws and shit. So. Right. See, now or marsupial yeah ours our feet are the the creases are like that because of our our walking our upright walking style slash running style so that's why the creases on ours are of diagonal now are straight across the diagonal ones from them are from the the ape is like that because not they don't walk upright they lean forward a lot 
and they kind of walk back and forth so their feet round when they walk. Plus, it's how they grip with their feet when they climb trees. Right. So trees tend to go on a diagonal pattern from the weight of their foot leaning down. It kind of, when gravity makes their foot twist towards the tree branch. Right. When they walk, they kind of, their feet kind of twist a bit because they're walking on all fours. So your feet would do that too if you just, just walk on all fours for a minute and you'll see how your feet kind of twist when you do it. Right. But for the, I'm having a hard time grasping how the ridges could go up and down on a creature that big that walks both upright and on all fours. Because if you read all the footage or you read all the stuff, there, there's, I wouldn't say it's 50-50, but there's a lot of um, footage that would say that they, they've seen both. Right. Because there's a right. lot of people that see them walking on all fours and then it stands right and walks towards them. And then I've seen a lot of them where all they say is they walk upright. Right. So, so I don't know if it's the combination of doing it both. That's why the ridges would go north and south on their feet. So I'm, I'm at a loss on why, uh, you know, I'm, he's obviously a doctor. So, and he's, right. that I've not witnessed the cast. I'm just kind of confused on why the ridges would go that way if they, still walk maybe it's because of the distribution of weights different than the way we do because they walk differently when it's been documented that you know a bigfoot when they walk their knees bend whereas uh, as humans our knees are more straight when we bend, when we walk right yeah that makes okay i can see that that's it's that, that's i like that that's interesting that it if if what he's saying is true then it is in fact it has to be a new species. Right, definitely. And, and go ahead. I was going to say, it's not out of the realm of possibilities that there are bigger, you know, that there are larger species out there that we have not seen before because we're listing and categorizing new species almost every day. Right. And for those of you out there right now, there was a... Um, YouTube video that I was actually just watching while we're, we're talking about this. <laughs> I had it muted, but it's best. It, the, it's by Taylor and Tate NCSW and it, that's the YouTube channel and it's best Bigfoot trail cam photo ever. And this photo is pretty freaking cool, but it, it's basically a Bigfoot caught on a trail cam. And it takes them a while to get there. It's probably like, around 940 9 minutes 40 seconds where they show the the whole picture it's 9 minutes 35 seconds cuz when they I was watching all they showed was like the feet but they sh they finally showed the whole picture so check it out it's pretty cool um you know t we're talking about you know all the video footage and stuff like that one thing we haven't really touched on yet is all the stories from people that have sighted bigfoot yeah. I ran across one today that I found somewhat heartwarming. <laughs> um, this guy, he's, he's our age now, but when he was a kid, he grew up on a farm. He said he was about five or six years old, and they had this really mean bull. Mm. And, um, his, his pa, as he called him, um, told him, you know, stay away from the bull. Don't go anywhere near them. You know, he's mean and it will hurt you. So he's out in the yard one day playing and he's not, he's not really close to the fenced in area where the bull is, but he's in the vicinity, let's say. Mm -hmm. Well, the bull notices him out there playing and it's just, like he said, it's an angry bull. It breaks down the fence and it's coming at the kid. Mm. And he's like, luckily, I, I thought quick enough. He's like, I climbed up this small tree, you know, so I was up out of its reach. He's like, but the bull just kept ramming the tree. Mm. Like, he's, he's like sitting there screaming for his dad, screaming for his dad. And he's just freaking terrified. And then, um, you know, the tree starts going. <laughs> and eventually, oh. the bull's breaking down this tree. And you can hear his dad driving um 
but it wasn't anywhere near wasn't going to get there in time he's like oh shit i'm done for this is it this is the end and then he said he heard this just really awful scream and then a female bigfoot had come over killed the fucking bull snapped its neck saved the kid and then took off and he's oh, like wow. and then his dad got there and got him in he said hurry up hurry up get in and they took off driving and he's like we're almost back to the house and i'm like pa did you see see her he's like see who the one the woman who saved me the hairy woman he's like yes <laughs> <laughs> but no then his dad took him inside you know into the barn and, and took him up in the loft up above there and just showed him all of these plaster casts of footprints that he had been doing oh wow so the dad knew that they had been in, or in and around the place, but maybe that was the, was that the first time he had seen him? I think so. He heard? I think well, so. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, you know, there's tons of different theories. And this, you know, playing devil's advocate to myself, this could actually explain the whole blurry thing. Um, but a lot of people say that if Bigfoot is real, they're extremely intelligent. They, they know how, I mean, there's, there's theories of dimensional travel. There's theories, all sorts of theories. Yeah, I, I wanted to go into that later, you know, uh, is Bigfoot alien. Right. Or there's also, you know, that it can control its vibrations. And mm -hmm. so that's how it can just all of a sudden just disappear. Yeah. You know? But they, the, if you go through native, le, native American legends and lore, you know, they talk about the Bigfoot, um, but they say that um, they bury their dead much like we do, only they put them in a cave and cover up the entrance of the cave with rocks. Mm. Mm. And that's why we never find a dead one, because they, they take care of the bodies. Nice. They take care of their own. Yeah. So, I mean, they're extremely family-oriented. They're extremely territorial from things that I have, I have found in my research. Now, I'll say this. I want to throw this little bit out there, too, because you kind of talked about the vibrations and how they disappear. Now, if you watch some YouTube clips on just military camouflage, there was one that I watched a little while ago about there was they, – they just showed, like, a, a tree line. It wasn't really a line. It was just, like, this field with dry grass and a couple of trees in it. And they said, can you find the sniper? And you're – I mean, they give you a good 30 seconds, and you are you can even pause the video and start looking through the field. You kind of see, think you can see where he is, but then when they start the video again, like six guys stand up. They oh, did shit. not see the whole video. You're looking for one person, but there's a shitload of them in there. So they're standing up. You know, they got like ghillie suits, you know, which are like those swamp suits. Right. Well, if you don't know what a ghillie suit is, look at it. Look it up. Um they, they just stand up, and but you couldn't see them, and you were looking for them. So this is us using, you know, all of our technology to try to come up with camouflage. Now, there's a difference between us using science to come up with camouflage and using generations of camouflage that you're, was passed down to save your life. Now... We're using scientific method and whatever optical illusion and try to figure out this is something that they've come up with over generations on how to hide. If we can come up with this using science over the course of 100 years, you know, you give them 10,000 years of perfecting this in the field every single day, they're going to be invisible. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's the footage that I found, like there was one guy who set up um, a, one of those heat cameras. Uh -huh. you know, heat, uh, flare camera? Yeah. Thermal. Yeah. And um, set it up. So it was recording overnight, left a candy bar on a stump. And you see the big foot. Big foot loves Snickers. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> He's a right Twix man. Right. 
snap into a slim gym. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so the Bigfoot guy sneaks in to the footage, crouches down, and you can see him a little bit above above the uh, the stump, and then you see him reach out, grab the candy bar, and you don't see him. You see the in, in thermal, you see him as this yellow blob. Right. And then he takes off and then comes back. And one thing that so many people have said is like when big they see Bigfoot standing still, he's swaying. And, mm. and I, I, you have some experience with track and field, correct? Yeah. Okay. I, I kind of, you know, put it to, it's like somebody who does high jump when they get ready to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They do that swaying, that rocking back and forth, uh -huh. and then they take off. And in that video, you see Bigfoot swaying back and forth by a tree. And, you know, that could also go with the vibrational stuff and stuff like that. Right. But, you know, and they always say it just smells horrible. Yeah. You know, you're hit by his putrid smell. And you, even when you don't see Bigfoot, you feel like he, something's watching you. You can sense it. Like the horse yeah. to go quiet. And so if, if you ever watched that, there was a show on uh... – one of the one of the channels, I don't know if it's Discovery History, True TV, I don't remember which one it was, but it was like Sasquatch hunters. These guys would go around the country, and that's where the or is there a squatch in them woods came yeah. came from was one of those those guys. But one thing that was they never did find a Sasquatch on the show, but one of the things that was always persistent there was the smell. Yes. The smell always preceded, you know, and, and every time that they would they would talk to somebody who had an encounter and they were trying, it was kind of like a ghost hunters type of show. They would go and talk to people that had encounters and then they'd go out in the woods and they would try to call out to try to capture it on camera. But uh, that was one of the things that these people would always talk about was the this putrid smell that was always, right. always around the Bigfoot. But when you think about it, though, you got shaggy, I mean, Leave your dog outside for a few hours. You gotta roll around. Right. Comes in. It fucking smells like hell. Yep. You're covered in hair, and that hair, and every picture you see, it's got, there's a lot of fucking hair. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people at, that have seen him during the daytime said that it's like it's, it, it's so black that its skin like absorbs the sunlight. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, but then there's other ones that say he's not black, he's brown. You know, there's all different. All different types of shit with it. Black as night. <laughs> right. But yeah, so, and you know, they're, they've been sighted all over the world. I mean, here we call them either Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Um, Florida, like we said earlier, Skunk Ape. Um, in Australia, they're called the Yowie. Um, they're the Yeti, I believe, in the Himalayans. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there it is. Duh. Almas in Mongolia. Uh, skunk ape, the grass man, the Ohio grass man, um, Wendigo. People think he might be a Wendigo mm -hmm. in Canada. There's um, yeah, there's a little bit more to the Wendigo story than, but that, but yeah, that makes sense. Um, in Sumatra, it's an orang pendek. Oh yeah, yeah. South America, it's a mapinguari. Um, in China, it's a yerin. So, yeah, I mean, all over the world, they've seen, there's been just reported sightings of Bigfoot. They call, everybody calls him by a different name. But when it comes down to it, giant dude yeah. covered in there, smells Gigantic. like pieces. Yeah, there's Gigantopithecus, which is an yeah. uh, earlier form of man. He's, well, I guess the Gigantopithecus is not a human, but very, it's a, it's a humanoid hominid. Yeah. But, yeah it so i look at all that because if you look at um uh all of the all of um the different iterations of it and you look at you parallel that with us humans and they're like well are they all different species are they all the same or i just kind of feel like there was kind of like with with humans there was a tribe of humans and then they spread out and then their bodies evolved 
and to fit the climate that they're at. Now, right. I feel that we'll just, for the lack of a, a general term, we'll call them Bigfoot. They had a central tribe, you know, 10, 15, 20, 100,000 years ago, whatever it was. And then they started moving on. Like maybe it was when we had Pangea where all the continents were together. They decided to spread out a little bit. And as the continents spread apart, they spread apart. And then they started evolving into adapting to the climate that they're living in because like the Yeti obviously is white and right. it, it lives, you know, in the snow area, kind of like a polar bear is white and it, right. you know, so, <clears throat> you know, and their, their, the color of their fur changes to help with their camouflage. It, exactly. You know, so they fit in, they fit into their environment better. So they're like with bears, they're bears. It's still polar bear, grizzly bear, brown bear, black bear, you know, they're still bears. So like Bigfoot, they're still Bigfoot, even though that they're, they live in separate areas. They're just adapted to their climate. So I think they're still all the same. Yeah. Um, yes. Another, another good YouTube channel to go to, if you want to check this stuff out is NVTV. NVTV. Um, yep. N. it's just NV then TV. So, uh -huh. But they have just tons and tons of footage of Bigfoots. Mm. Big feet. Big. What is the plural Bigfoot? <laughs> Bigfoots. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, some of it, like, I was watching from this Todd guy. They had some of his film. I can't remember his last name, but he's supposedly a renowned Bigfoot hunter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, no, that's not. You know, then I started thinking about the logistics of creating a costume to look like that. And then, I mean, you, the eyes, you, you see the eyes on these things and they're not human eyes, they're animal eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like going, okay, well that could be, you know, some sort of contact, but they're, the size of the eye was huge. So I'm like going, oh, you know, it's just, they put these glass things in a mask, but then it blinked. Hmm. So logistically, or physics, you know, it says you can't do that. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. It, you know, there has been several, uh, several hoaxes that have been perpetrated over the years that uh, actually garnered people, you know, a little bit of money, and it's also caused a death. Oh. Um, so in, I'm going to talk about the money one first. So in 2014, a guy named Rick Dyer, uh, had a, he claimed that he had killed a Bigfoot outside of San Antonio, Texas. And they said he had scientific tests proving that the body was from DNA, uh, to prove that it was not human or, you know, so when he uh he started taking the body on on tour and whatever but then they found out that people were stealing like bits of it and they found out that the ha hair on the body was actually camel hair and by this time he'd already made almost sixty thousand dollars touring oh, wow. around with his bigfoot corpse but what he said was he created the second body yes this was second body because the the original Bigfoot body was stolen from him. Oh yeah. So, so yeah. So there was that that hoax by Rick Dyer. But then I don't, I couldn't find the dude's name. But in 2012, a guy in Montana was dressed in a ghillie suit and was perpetrating a Bigfoot hoax, and he got hit by a car. <laughs> so. And he was trying to, apparently he was trying to scare people into thinking that there was a Bigfoot on the side of the road and they hit him. Yeah. Instant karma. Yeah. So, so there's, I mean, there's a lot of other uh, famous hoaxes out there. We talked about one in the, uh, uh, in the Michigan dog man thing about the person that was hopping on all fours in the, like the ghillie suit. Right. Thing. That one ended up being, it was, was it really a, a werewolf? Was it there? It was actually, uh, it was their friend. So there's, there's been 
plenty of hoaxes out there that are really campy. And then the one I love the most, though, and I'm going to go back to something you said earlier, too, in a second. The one I love the most, though, is the nonchalant footage that everybody knows from being Bigfoot, where he's just kind of like strutting. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's the old, old grainy black and white footage where Bigfoot just strutted. It's old film. Dude yeah. shot an eight millimeter film. Now, they're still back and forth on it. Was it dude in the gorilla suit? Was it a real footage? So there's, I've seen and I've researched a lot of this lately. It's still up in the air on whether or not it's real or not because they, there's claims that the guy who shot the footage came out and said it was his buddy in a gorilla suit. But then there's footage, there's claims that said that, no, that was a lie. So I'm just going to let that one stand as great, great cinema. Right. But what I wanted to go back to was talking about that footage of the female Bigfoot that we talked about before. You said because they went back and analyzed the film and said that it wasn't tampered with. Right. Now, I want to talk briefly on how they do that process. And they do this with a lot of footage. You can take it and you can do this with Photoshop and you can do it with a light box. And there's a lot of other, even like more expensive programs. Those two are just simple uh, Adobe products where you take an image and you can put it into, uh, you put it in there and then you actually, you can break the footage down by contrast, by tone. And uh, when you do that, you can look at, the actual footage, and when you look at it, it would be like a pixelated black and white thing. If it was layered in any way with something that wasn't taken at the exact same moment, it would stand out as a different color black and white than everything else that was on there. Now, one of the most famous uh, photos where it's supposedly a hoax, but Kodak themselves have come out and said, we put a million dollars up on the line to see if you can prove to us that this, this film is a, is a hoax. And that was the, the, uh, the, um, uh, the spaceman, the, uh, Firth Colin, or, um, was it, uh, um, Colin Firth spaceman. I think it's something like that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Firth spaceman. That's what it was. It's a little girl with an alien and looks like an, an astronaut standing behind her. This guy was taking a picture of his daughter taking a picnic in the 50s, and it was a series of three pi pictures. The pictures, the one picture is his daughter sitting there. The next picture is her, his daughter sitting there again. Now there's an, uh, a spaceman. It looks like a, a modern-day astronaut over the top of her head. And then the third picture was no, no spaceman. Okay. So, if you think about it, the time it took to take film pictures, and the girl does barely move in the picture. So the whole thing could have taken less than 30 seconds to take all three pictures. You click, you focus, you click again, you focus again, you click again, and that was done. He didn't see a spaceman when he did it, but when they developed the film, it was there. Kodak has since analyzed the film, and everybody else has analyzed the film, and they, they can't prove that it's fake because you use the same spectral analysis that I was talking about with those other programs to look at this stuff and you can't, you know, the, it's all, it's all one layer. Right. So you use a lot of that stuff to, that's how you can, if you see a, a picture on online, you can easily run it yourself and see whether or not something is, is obviously a hoax. It's not that hard to do anybody with, a, you know, Adobe Creative Suite has access to the tools to look at this stuff. So right. if they've already done the analysis on that and it, it's obviously one layer, all the stuff was shot at the same time, that takes out that it was special effects. Now it goes back to, was it, uh, you know, a costume, which we've already debunked that it couldn't have been a costume because these schlups that took the video didn't have the didn't have the funds to create a costume of that elaborate order right. with the with the, the materials, the time, the money that were available at that time for them. So I think we have one that is a very good possibility of being actual footage of a Bigfoot from what you said, sixty seven? Yeah, sixty seven by Roger Patterson. 
Yeah. So look that footage up. I just did it. I looked at it again. I'd seen it a while ago, but it's, it's very convincing when you, you have to take a lot of, I mean, there's, you have to take the good with the bad, just like Bigfoot is a lot like uh, alien encounters. You, there's a lot with aliens. There's nine fucked up stupid stories for every one that's possible. Right. Bigfoot is a lot like that. Now, Bigfoot, you and I, we, we've talked off camera multiple times about aliens and Bigfoot. We talk a lot. We talk a lot, a lot of shit. But <laughs> and the peanut gallery sitting over there has had to listen to a lot of this. Yeah. <laughs> we, we talk a lot of bullshit about this stuff. But, I mean, we, we talk about it because it's passionate to us. But with one thing that we've always talked about was Bigfoot because growing up, around the house that you got you 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 and your brother grew up in you had a thousand acres of state forest yeah. out the back door yeah we used to run around trying to find werewolves trying to find the wendigo trying to find bigfoot trying to find all these fucking you know pixies and sprites and elves and whatever the fuck was out there in the woods we wanted to find this shit right <laughs> and see i'm glad you brought that up because i was actually talking to my brother about this earlier this week um because when we were kids, we actually found in the snow a footprint that I swear to God was about two feet long. Oh, wow. And everybody tell us, oh, well, the sun does that by coming in and, you know, melting the snow around it. Like, if the sun did that, it wouldn't have been so deep. Right. So uh, I want to I talk in that briefly, too, because about, about, I want to talk about that point. Because, yes... If you're walking in the snow, there's times where your foot can, if you, those of you who don't know what snow is, it's a white powdery shit that comes down in the wintertime. But when you step in it, sometimes your foot, uh, if you don't pick your feet up all the way because the snow can get deep, you have a tendency of dragging your foot and then stepping down. Yes. So when the snow, uh, snow melts or packs over time, the gravity brings it down, it will elongate your footprint. But It'll unless you're unless you're doing the moonwalk, it is not going to make your footprint two feet. If right. you turn a size nine into a size sixteen, but that is still nowhere near two feet. Especially when at that time the snow in our yard was up to my knees. Oh wow! But the footprints were spaced apart, and there's no there's nothing disturbing the snow in between. Oh damn. So for us to walk through the snow, we're creating a trail, you know, all the way through with no break between steps because right. there's no other way to do it because of how deep the snow was. But this was like somebody stepped through it. <laughs> was this across the backyard? Uh, yes. So I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll set the environment up a little bit. So you guys had like, like two and a half, three acres cut out of an evergreen forest with right. a two-story home that was kind of built into a hillside that from your kitchen window, you could see the entire backyard. Right. Well, looking out that back window, you guys could have seen the tracks from there. Yes. And, and then we went out and checked them out. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you, you, you put your cereal bowl in the sink, you could have seen these fucking tracks going across there. And I, I'm just trying to set the scene up because, and then outside of those, of the evergreen forest on either side of your house was like a thousand acres of deciduous forest. Right. With swamps mixed in. And yeah. So, and we've talked about, we've talked about the woods ar around your house growing up quite a bit, but yeah. So that, I like that story. That's, that's pretty damn cool. As a kid, I was terrified of Bigfoot and I, there was times when I would feel like somebody was watching me through my window. Mind you, my window to the ground, because there was a back deck behind, my window was in the corner of the house. So I had a win, or my bedroom was in the corner of the house. So behind one window, there was a deck where somebody could be standing there looking in. The mm -hmm. other one, the other window was probably about 10 foot off the ground. And that's the window I always felt like somebody was watching me from. <laughs> and not I would one, not the deck that was only uh, four feet off the ground, but or right. off the deck, but the ten foot one. 
Yeah. And so, I mean, I as a kid, and I played in those woods all the time, but I would not go in them at night. Mm. I was just, I mean, I have when I was, when I got older. Yeah. As a kid, I wouldn't. I mean, I would hear shit out there, stuff that you're just like, uh, that, 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 uh, I didn't hear that. I'm going away now. <laughs> well, we, I mean, we weren't stupid kids, but we were dumb kids. Mm-hmm. Intelligently, we were all we were all pretty smart kids, but we did some dumb shit when we were when we were young. Like yeah. those same woods that Bigfoot was in, we'd watch the movie The Howling on a full moon, and then run out there at midnight trying to find a werewolf. Right. Easily, we would have. I mean. At the, now looking back at it, there could have been a Bigfoot just staring at us. And we could have walked right past him, and they went, these kids are fucking dumb. Right. I'm right here. Right. But, again, highly intelligent creatures, they'd have to be. Yeah. To avoid clear detection. Let's say clear detection because they've been detected. Yes. But what we're also talking about, too, is – um they have to be on a certain level empathic. Right. Because why else would the female uh, Bigfoot, we got to come up with a, 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 you know, a feminine version of the name female or Bigfoot. Right. But when she would come out, she came out and killed the bull to save right. the child. So there's obviously there's an emotional connection with these creatures that they you know what is their purpose here is it here to observe are they like the watchers from from marvel comics <laughs> but instead of being up on a asteroid staring down at us are they here just observing it's hard to tell and here's see right near you is one of the biggest bigfoot sighting areas in the world yes and yes. that's up in Vancouver area of Canada. Yeah. And I live in the shadow of Mount St. Helens out here in southwest Washington. And if you don't know this area of, of the country, from where I live all the way up to Vancouver, Canada, is essentially, uh, with a few pockets here there, is essentially forest. Yeah. And... I mean, D.B. Cooper came up missing in the same area, and we found his parachute, a little bit of money, but he's never been found. So, <laughs> you know, so there's all is it's expansive. So to say that a creature uh, could live around in and around us and not be seen, yeah, I could I could say that because Mount St. Helens, I can look out my back my back window and see it. It's only like 50 miles as the crow flies, but to drive there from here, it takes almost two hours. Wow. Because you have to take different roads and windy yeah. and all this other shit because of the hills and stuff. And there's hills and valleys and stuff that, that are completely uninhabited by humans. Yeah. yeah so it's, and this is just my area down here where, you know, I'm, I'm 20 miles from downtown Portland, you know, so we have a, a million, we have a city of a million people, you know, 20 miles from me, but just north of me, 30, 40 miles is expansive wilderness that there's nobody. So this very easily, you're about to say yeah. something. Yeah. Oh, there's um, very, I'm glad you brought they can hide. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Mount St. Helens because doing my research, I ran across a video about the Mount St. Helens government cover-up for Bigfoot. Now, we were talking about this before before we started filming, and um, you, you, think, you said it was like around 1980 that Mount St. Helens erupted last year. Yes. Okay. Well, during that eruption, and it was a big eruption. It wasn't just a little poof, uh, you know. Yeah, like two It wasn't like a poof. 2.2 trillion square yards of froze. was moved. And yes. I, here, I'll give you an idea how big of an event was. There's this lake that's right next to it. It's called Spirit Lake. It was when this, okay, first of all, Mount St. Helens used to be 11,000 feet. 
Now it's 8,300 feet oh, after wow. the eruption. And all that, when it slid down, it actually took a lake called Spirit Lake and it sh all the, the debris from the mountain went under it. And when it all settled, Spirit Lake is at 800 feet higher in sea level elevation than it was the day before. Oh, wow. So it was a pretty big eruption. <laughs> right. So as with most, you know, national emergencies and shit like that, the military comes in to help out. Yes. So this was, and I think you, you found the, the YouTube clip, right? Yes, I did. And we'll put yep. it in the show notes. It's pretty cool. Okay. Um, the, this guy was in the military at the time and he's telling the story. You don't, I mean, they, they show pictures throughout the, the, um, the YouTube video, but it's nothing that's real accurate to what was going on. It's just more for reference. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I think some of it are even illustrations, but so he's in the military and he's just a, he's just a grunt, you know, private or whatever. And they're, he gets to where they're supposed to go. And they're in this tent, you know, getting ready to go look for, look for survivors, you know, in the wilderness. Cause some people lived in the wilderness. Yeah. And he said this native American came in. I, I believe he said it was native American. I could be wrong on that point. Um, if you watch the video though, you'll know, mm -hmm. but so came in and he's like, this really big hairy guy was with him. And he's like, and you could tell the guy didn't want to believe. He didn't want to believe it was a Bigfoot. He didn't, you know, or anything like that. He's like, but this guy was like eight, nine feet tall, hairy, stunk. And he would talk with the, the other guy in real low tones and stuff like that. And he's like, never heard what he said. But from there, we were loaded up into trucks and we, were, we would go to different sites. And at each one of these sites we went to, there'd be a cave. And when we'd get there, the, the, he's like, the big guy would let out this noise and then wait, and he'd be answered. And at that point, he would go into the cave and then come back out, whisper something to, you know, or say something to the other guy, and the other guy would direct the, the you know, the squad to go in and retrieve the body. And then when they found it, like, he's like, the first one they found was just, the guy was, the body was just covered in burns and stuff like that, and it was barely hanging on. And he's like, he saw a tear go down the cheek of the, large hairy man where that's what i'm going to continue to call it because that's what yeah. he called and then they left and he's like you know he, he saw the resignation in the face of the creature and the thing turned and left and he's like and we had to follow and he's like probably about 10 to 15 seconds after we left the area we heard a gunshot put it out of its and he's like then the bodies were loaded up and he's like, and we went, we kept doing that. We'd go to spot to spot and sometimes he wouldn't be answered. And, you know, sometimes, you know, he'd be answered and they'd be fine. You know, he'd go in and they'd come back out and say, okay, we go to a different area, blah, blah, blah. But in, he's like, and we were after, afterwards we were debriefed and told that we were never allowed to speak of this. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I found that just fascinating because you know, I've also saw other ones where, you know, like a squad, like back in the early 90s, a squad of Navy SEALs took out a pack of Bigfoot. Big feet, big foot, big fucking big guys. Yeah. <laughs> but they were considered out of control. And in the process, they lost one of their own. And I mean, this mission took them three days to carry out. And they were told to bring one back alive. But the squad leader said after how, seeing how violent and stuff they were, he said, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> and they killed them all you but, know it i mean that's unfortunate that i mean it's unfortunate that they would have to uh to resort to you know having to kill kill them like that but well this is it, also the government so is yeah. it they were out of control but or was it they were in part of the land that the government wanted yeah i mean because they they probably don't take blankets and we can't put the smallpox in the blankets to kill them off that way. So, right. You know, it, but at the same time, it was Navy SEALs. These are some of the most highly trained, specialized operatives 
that we have in our entire military. Right. And it took a whole pack of them to go after a bunch of Bigfoot, and they still lost one of theirs against a force that was unarmed. Right. They may had rocks. They may have had sticks. You know, obviously, Bigfoot has been around long enough to be able, and they're smart enough to create, you know, weapons of their own. But these are highly trained, highly specialized forces with automatic weapons, and they yeah. still lost one of their own. Right. Well, in from stories I've heard, you know, people saying, you know, they've shot one, and it just didn't face it, the creature at all. <laughs> but I mean, you think of something that size. I mean, you you hear about people who go bear hunting and they have to have a huge, large caliber weapon to kill it. Yes. Right. Well, Bigfoot is bigger than a bear. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's something to consider as well. And they're also interdimensional. Mm hmm. Yeah, because I mean, if you're taking this automatic weapon that is shooting so many rounds per second. It can't do it at the velocity as like a big rifle that somebody uses to kill a bear. So it's going to be like a BB gun to this thing. Right. Similar to the, you know, redheaded giant that we talked about in that one episode. Yeah, though, a uh, redheaded giant from Afghanistan? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's just, but I've heard, I mean, ran across so many different things. Like one person, um, there's a channel, I can't remember it, but this guy created a, a big Bigfoot documentary channel because he was terrified by one at one point. Um, he was he had leased this land, I believe it was in Tennessee, um, from this guy so he could hunt on it. And he spent like half his time out there in that, that land. He said one day he was hunting and he ran almost face to face in with one of these things and it terrified him so much that he he stayed out of the woods for 15 years <laughs> wow so but and so he started up this this channel and like <clears throat> or no this is a different channel anyways <laughs> but there's like i said there's just so much information that it's overwhelming yeah but this person talks about you know how they can communicate somewhat you can go out there and like one of the things is knocking like wood against wood and like you'll get a reply mm. where they'll, they'll knock wood against wood in the show. I think it was monster quest or something like that uh -huh. went up to some Island in Canada, um, which is supposedly one of the, it's very what populated. I mean, it's it's for, <laughs> yeah. So they're up there because there's been lots of sightings of Bigfoot on this island and they're staying in this hunting shack and they were pelted with rocks throughout the night, had things like like limb, branches and shit slam against the side of the house. Mm -hmm. Basically being told to get the fuck out. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, I, I've seen, I, there's so much, there's so much information yet. I still ran into very few Bigfoot attacks. Yeah. There's very few. There's uh, you, when you go through, you read a lot of like the fucking thing chucked a boulder over our boat. It wasn't right. trying to hit us. It was trying to scare us or, you know, it was breaking branches near us or pushed a tree down towards us. But very seldom do you hear one that's like, yeah, the motherfucker beat me up, you know? Right. Bigfoot did it. Right. I did find one, and I think it was more because it was protecting itself. Yeah. But, you know. Which is the nature of any any species, self-preservation. You right. see that in a, in a toddler where they learn to lie, it's self-preservation. It's, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's, uh, that's in our heredity. Now, there's a couple things that, uh, one aspect of Bigfoot that I wanted to uh, discuss, and we kind of, glossed glossed over a little bit and talk, said we talk about it is whether or not bigfoot is not from our planet dun 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 so i have a couple of different little stories here that kind of pose the question 
The first one happened in, uh, it was December 9th, 1974. There was a dairy farmer by the name of William Bostick. He was from Frederick, Wisconsin. He was uh, returning from a co-op meeting at about 10.30 p.m. And he was nearly slammed, he, he nearly slammed into a UFO that was on the road in front of him. And because the bottom half of it was shrouded in fog, he didn't see it, locks up his brakes, and inside or came out of the outside of this transparent dome came out a six and a half foot tall ape like creature with reddish brown fur covering its body, except for its face, had distinctive pointed ears, and it was and then the other one was operating the control panel, and then uh, it kind of checked him out a little bit after the accident. And then got back in and disappeared. So huh. the the creature running the ship was exactly what we refer to as a Bigfoot, but it was a little bit shorter than what normally we refer to the height of a Bigfoot because, like we talked about before, six foot nine plus. Right, and that's the first time I've ever heard of it having pointed ears. Oh yeah, yeah, and a lot of times it's black fur. Yep. A lot, so especially when you get into North America, it's normally blacker fur or maybe a brown, but reddish usually comes in uh, with some of the other creatures like the uh, the dog man and um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? There's another one that has reddish fur, but not necessarily Bigfoot. Usually it's black or brown. Right. Or if white with the Yeti. Yeah, or depending on uh, North American right. ones. Uh, and then the second one is closer to my area out here. It was in Rutland, British Columbia, up in Canada. This one was uh, August uh, 76. Several men and their children saw a hairy ape-like entity, six to seven feet tall, roaming around the mountainside. They also found a clump of hair that was sent to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police for identification. Uh, laboratory uh, and analysis confirmed that it was primate, but specifically it could not be matched to any species on Earth. And then um, later uh, it was found in the same exact area there was multiple UFO sightings that were in the Rutland, British Columbia area along <coughs> the whole period of time. So the speculation that there was, they did, this one didn't see Bigfoot at the controls, but they were, they were putting a correlation between the UFO sightings and then the recent sightings of the Bigfoot. Then, so somebody proposed that uh, if the Bigfoot creatures were pilots landing on Earth for uh, exploratory purposes or higher extraterrestrials were leaving behind specimens as guinea pigs to test our environment for long-term survival. So whether or not that they're put out there to see if they can actually live in this environment and then they're doing studies on said Bigfoot later to see if they could actually terraform our planet or inhabit our planet themselves. Right. And you know, <laughs> it's interesting. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject real quick. Sure. Because every place they're seen is a place that would have caves or something like that. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about caves, caves you know, they look small, but once you go in, they can just go underground and go on for days. Yes. So, I mean, they could have any sort of technology they need all down there. <laughs> That's true. There's uh, like the Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico go on for miles. Miles and miles. That's just the amount that they've explored. Right. So, yeah, I can see it. One other thing is uh, that the Bigfoots are actually – criminal entities deposited here on earth as some form of cosmic deportation kind of very similar to what the british did in sending all of their criminals to australia right i i see i have a hard time buying that one just because of how many story like the story where the female one saves the little boy uh, yeah i have a hard time with that particular uh part of the story myself for similar reasons. And the other one is that they're, if they were criminals on their planet, then they would generally, as of if they were, you know, honestly bad creatures, they would try to better themselves by taking our shit. And yeah. like you already talked about, 
there is very minimal amounts of actual Bigfoot confrontation where Bigfoot's attacking the first. Oh, 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 oh. Are we there? Super slow mo here, man. There we go. <laughs> so, so I don't really buy the Bigfoot's a criminal. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't either. Because also, if it was a criminal, it would probably have tendencies to violence. Exactly. We've already shown that. We've already and talked as about as big as they are. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and yeah, then, yeah we've that. had to have uh, Navy SEALs apparently go in and attack some of them, but at the same point, I don't think that it's uh, I don't I don't think they're criminals. Uh, the guinea pig story to me is a little bit more convincing that they're here as an experiment in our but but still, I just think that they're actual creatures from here that we just have a hard time finding. Right. I'm with you. Oh, sorry. We had like a little interruption with our internet there. We were having technical difficulties. <laughs> so. And then we are again. Okay. All right. Let's 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 get through these technical difficulties. Dun, dun, okay. dun. And so you're moving on my side. All right, cool. All right. Yeah, everything's back to green. All right. So, oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, there's, like I said, there's been so many things. And, like, and you know, back to us being kids, you know, so many times out in those woods, even during the day where I felt like I was being watched or going outside at night and hanging out, just doing shit and just feeling like something is in that tree line watching me. Yeah. You know, there's um, – our. I had neighbors that had uh, woods that had – you know, they had they – had a, a, land out in the middle of nowhere and we'd go out there and just get lost and there were times where we'd take uh wood that we were when my parents were remodeling their home we would take the wood that was ripped out of the house and we'd take it out to the this um this uh acreage that they had and we'd put it out there and then we'd cut it up and use it for a bonfire for theirs they'd have like um fall parties and stuff out there but there were times when i'd be on their land by myself now there was hundreds and hundreds of acres of state forest around their property they only had like 20 acres but there was hundreds of acres on the other side of this little creek but there were times that i was out there that i honestly felt like there was somebody watching even though there wasn't a home within a mile yeah and there was yeah. no reason there's no reason for anybody to be even close to their land when I knew I was the only one on the property. Right. Right. And, you know, our woods, you know, the woods that we grew up in, yeah, a lot of people hunted them during, you know, during hunting season, but hunting season's only like a month and a half long. Yeah. So, and, that doesn't explain the rest of the year. <laughs> and that was one of the things, too, growing up was uh, during that time period, we were always told not to play out there. Right didn't say that we didn't go out there but <laughs> right yeah um uh, but you know there's there. there's tons and tons of stories too on the internet from hunters who um like there was one in particular guy said he shot two deer and he shot one let it go down and saw the other one and basically got two shots off quick which is unusual when you're deer hunting with a rifle right but he took down two deer and then when he went out there, he could only find one of them. He's like, he saw where it fell, and it was down. And but by the time the, he got out of his blind, all, to the deer, and it was gone. Yep, somebody had taken it. Because he's like, there's no tracks. It was just, you saw where the body fell down and died. Right. And then there was a blood pool there. And then it was just gone. Right. <laughs> and a hunter would have field dressed it before they tried to pack it because that makes it lighter. Yes. So I don't know about you, but I'm what most people consider the average, average size, you know, we're average size guys. Yeah. You know, a deer can weigh anywhere from like a hundred to 200 pounds, you know, depending on, you know, I'm not talking about super bucks, but they field dress it to, 
to take out, you know, 25, 30 pounds of it so that they could pack it out easy. And if you get there and somebody just decided to, you know, I'm just going to take a 150 pound deer off your hands without uh, so much as leaving a track. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little, uh, a little suspicious. All right. I'm going to give you some signs to look for when you're low in the forest and think you might be running into Bigfoot country. All right. Okay. I'm ready. These are things to look out for. Odd yell, yell like sounds that you've never heard from any creature before in your life. Okay. Um, wood knocking together, like knock, 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 knock. Um, another thing is um, trees that are put together form like an X or something like that. And just, there's no way they could have fallen that way. You know, you can tell where they're wedged together. And it's like they're marking the territory, marking their path. And like I saw one video where somebody found um, all these leaves and all these sticks, basically it built a little hut. And they're in there. And then while they're in there checking it out, they heard this yell from the mountainside. And they look and they filmed it. And there was a creature on the mountainside that was walking down. And I mean, it's so far away, you can't really tell what it is. But it's shaking uh-huh at him and stuff like that and it was yelling in a really weird sound you know i've i've heard that a lot too in the stuff about the the shaking of the fist like the, you get off my lawn right the type type of maneuver so i've i've read a, a lot about that also you, rock being thrown at you and pine cones um there was one guy who would go out into Bigfoot country and I mean I watched the video but anything it could have been tampered with because he didn't really see anything in the video but he mm-hmm. would knock and then like 20 seconds later he'd get a reply with the same knock huh. and then he was getting like pine cones thrown at him and because he was he was asking him to throw them at him oh okay and they did and one of them hit him in the back <laughs> <laughs> one of them hit him in his he had a hat on and hit him in his head and he's like, it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yep. So those are things to look for when you're out in the woods thinking you might be in Bigfoot country. See, I mean, cause you're looking at these trees <clears throat> that are like falling over. Well, you I mean like at first glance, it looked like it just fallen over. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you weren't really inspecting it, you would think, Oh, it just fell that way. But when you look at it, you're like, um, where did it fall from? <laughs> <laughs> right. Why? This, the, if the wind was going to push the tree over, they wouldn't have pushed them together like that because that would have meant two different wind blasts would have to come in opposing directions. Right. And if if this tree had fallen over to make the X on that tree, um, where's the base that it fell from? Yeah. I mean, it didn't, you know, from 20 feet away, picked it up and carry it over here and lay it there. <laughs> right. That's some weird fucking wind. That's like straight out of Wizard of Oz shit there. <laughs> exactly. Oh. So, <clears throat> how do you feel about Bigfoot? Real? Fake? So, I take Bigfoot as being a creature that has small numbers of population that is very adept at camouflaging and just likes to go where people are not. And I do believe that there is a creature out there that is, you know, stands upright, has human intelligence, and, you know, I don't know if it's an alien. I don't believe it's interdimensional. But I do believe that there's a creature out there that just doesn't want to be seen. Right. I'm with you. And, you know, you say small population, but, you know, we talked about with the caves and stuff. They could have a large population and just live underground. Yeah. Very true. I mean, they're saying uh, that there are almost probably there are estimates as high as 100,000 people that live underground in Los Angeles. Hmm. So it's very possible that there could be a cave that we have yet to see, yet to explore. Have you ever seen The Descent? There's a whole bunch of people that lived underground in that that fucking cave. Right. 
So it, they very well could be, you know, and the only ones that are venturing out are just the, you know, the scouts. Yeah. Yeah. Just check and see, okay, have they, have those fuckers ruined this forest yet? (laughs) Right. So it, it very, uh, Bigfoot to me, I do believe that there is a creature out there that is, you know, that we just haven't seen. There's like we talked about before, there are tons of species that are being you know defined and, and found every single day right yeah i mean it's it's amazing to me because when you think about it, how intelligent they have to be to avoid being seen oh definitely and you know they have to have some extraordinary sense to let them know when we're nearby and just think about like indigenous tribes well okay we'll go with the um the the Sentinese, they you know there's somewhere between fifty and five hundred of them on that little island off the you know off the coast of Senegal, you know but in the Indian Ocean there. But year or generation after generation after generation, they've taught each other to shoot any stupid fucking Bible bringing motherfucker that comes to that island. You know what? And they're to me that makes them smarter than the rest of the population. Right. Oh, you know, going back to your criminal theory, I bet you that was brought up by Republicans. <laughs> they're immigrants. They must be, you know, right. criminal. Rapists. They're, un- they're undocumented. Get them the right. fuck out of here. <laughs> you know, there's a good chance that Bigfoot has been on this earth longer than we have. Oh, especially if you go by the Bible, because we've only been here 5,000 years. Did you hear that? Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you kind of like stopped there. like, oh, technical difficulties? No, we're done. But uh, it's when you think about um, how creatures uh, evolve through, throughout time, it, like take like a, a horse, for instance, or a deer, something like that. Their instincts, that, I mean, it's their biology that gets them – from birth within minutes up and walking. Yeah. Because if they don't, they die. Right. That something will eat them if they don't do that. So they evolved. Yes, evolution is real. They evolved over time to make their biology allow you to walk within minutes of taking your first breath outside of the womb. Now, us as humans, we haven't evolved to that point yet where it still takes nine months to 14 months to take your first step. And then it it takes another couple of years before you get your balance. You know, we haven't, we haven't evolved to that point, but so if a horse and a deer and a cow and all these other creatures can evolve to the point where they can get up and start walking and running with their mom within literally within an hour of being born. Yeah. Is it, so far fetched to say that a creature could have it in its biology to learn how to hide in plain sight over time. It's be that's their biology. They they've evolved to that point. It's basically the um, primate version of a chameleon. Yeah. You know, I mean, chameleons. That's a defense mechanism. I mean, there's there's fish that have the same type of defense mechanism. It, it, yeah, that's why the underside of a shark is white. Right. And the, the top side is gray. So you can't see it from above or below. You know, it's death from above and below. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's completely plausible that the, these things exist out there. Right. And I mean, no, go ahead. So I'll, I'll, I'll give the other side their voice for a second. It's Bigfoot, man. If I didn't see one in the woods dead, why don't we see any skeletons and uh, other, you know, their remnants and shit? Well, we already talked about that because yep. they are intelligent creatures and they do what we do. We don't let our corpses lay, lay out there. They don't kill each other like we do. They don't have serial killers in, in their midst. They bury their dead properly. Right. And in... Besides the the Patterson film, all the I'm gonna go out and say that the the film that I have seen of Bigfoot, besides the Patterson one, 
that I believe are when they caught him by accident. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that they recorded him until after going back and watching it. Right. And that that's how I think some of the best footage is. It's the stuff that, like, oh, we were in the woods walking, and, you know, oh, when we got home, we saw this. I think some of those are the best YouTube videos out there. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, and there is so much to be – I mean, like I said, there's just so much information out there. And I am so jealous of my kids um, because I wish I had this much information at my fingertips when I was their age. Oh, man. I was a know-it-all little little asshole as a child as it was. If I had access to the internet, I would have been murdered by the rest of my family. <laughs> I think I would have, too. <laughs> but they would have buried us together, probably. Just, <laughs> right. They're kind of cheap. They just want one grave. <laughs> with, it, that with our brothers, too. Right. Yeah, we were all like that. Yeah, I mean, there's just, there's something to be said, though, for how, and I, I keep coming back to how intelligent they are, mm-hmm. because they will communicate with you, and they'll let you know when they don't want you around, but I mean, I've, like I said, found stuff where people had talked about, um, you know, going out and hanging out, not not actually hanging out with them, but being in the woods in approximation of them, and like one person who has had them come up on his land would leave st- he stopped hunting um because this was the same guy who shot the two deer and one of them was gone you know after so many experiences he stopped hunting he still carried a knife with him but it was like at one point he had he had it in its sights and we talked about this a little bit with when we talked about the dogman it was uh-huh. almost like a psychic thing something said inside his head don't shoot Oh you know, yeah, it's gonna be worse for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, but so after that, he he stopped taking a gun out there. He still went out in the woods, but he would basically leave offerings for him, and he would he would find gifts left for him, like feathers and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So Wait. I mean, they they do so, habitate. Let, let's let's talk about that for a little bit. So yeah, he comes back and he gets uh, gifts of um, uh, feathers. Mm. But okay, but let's let's look at it from let's look at it from the Bigfoot's point of view. You know, you're leaving him like a couple of dead squirrels, and they're like, "Oh, it's a couple of dead squirrels." Right. I guess I can eat tonight. This will <laughs> this will keep me alive for the winter. You know? Right. So they're like, "Okay, I guess I got to give him something." What do we got around the house? I don't know. They like fluffy things. So just give him those feathers. All right, let's give him the feathers. Maybe you'll like that shit. I don't know. I don't know what these humans like. So you got to think that, you know, they make, because when they take a carcass, you don't see the carcass anymore. So you got to uh, think maybe they use all of that shit. Right. Kind of like the, you know, the, the, um, the Eskimos, the Intuit or whatever, whatever they're called up there. They, when they kill a whale, they use every bit of it. Right. You know, so, you know, and so they they probably do the same thing. Which, you know, to be honest, we uh, as a society now do that with pigs and cows. We use every bit of it because right. the slaughterhouses have figured out how to monetize every bit. Right. Of it. I mean, hell, they even sell the blood. And. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you were frozen there for a second yeah they uh, so there's but it, it's cool that they're resourceful enough to i mean they understand it's like they don't kill a deer every day we have to use every bit of it right yeah so well, at least, unless you're some big game hunter who's just basically somebody who's hunting to measure their dick right and you know fuck those people yep Fuck those people. Now I do okay. Uh, a, a quick quick side note on game hunting. Now a lot of the big game hunting things are actually done by the game reserves because sometimes they have a lion who's just a prick. He's a prick to all the others. And instead of shooting the lion themselves, they offer it up to big game hunters for a huge sum of sum of money 
to come in and take it off their hands and then they use that money to help out the reserve. That's how a lot of they make a lot of their money. So there right. is some validity to big game hunting. You know, they right. it actually helps uh, a lot of these some of these game reserves because sometimes uh, an animal's an asshole; <laughs> it just needs right. to go. But right. uh, but you know, if you measure your dick by the size of uh, the rarity of an animal that you shot when it's not going to shoot back on you're shooting it from a half mile away. Uh, you know, it's, it's just so many, there's so many pussy things. Yeah. Involved. You want to impress me? Take your rifle into the ghetto and come back with, come back out. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no. Good, good chance. You're not. <laughs> there's, you know, there's, there's some backwoods in, in uh, Siberia, you know, yeah. You walk out there at night and see what you, see what comes back. So, you know, you know, you're already heading to you're already heading to Africa. Go to South Africa. There's certain parts of South Africa. You stay loaded. You know, yep. keep your gun and see what happens. <laughs> yep. So, but anyway, getting a little off traffic. Uh, I'm going to bring us back to topic this time. So, right. now that we've 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 discussed the possibility of Bigfoot being an alien. Bigfoot being blurry, uh, Bigfoot being a hoax, Bigfoot being uh, real, Bigfoot being part of the military, Big, Bigfoot being attacked by the military, uh, Bigfoot interdimensional being, travel, <laughs> inter, interdimensional travel, um, you know, alien spacecraft pilots, and we've talked that you've you've mentioned that you do believe that there is a Bigfoot. I believe that there is a Bigfoot. Where do we go from here to help people find Bigfoot themselves? Well, we've listed off what to look for. Yes. Um, but my advice would be leave them the fuck alone. Perfect. That's the best advice that anybody could give. Searching for Bigfoot. Don't don't run around saying that there's a squash in them, them their woods because there is. And that's all you need to know. Right. If they just want to live in peace, let them. And chances are, if you're in the woods by yourself and you get that weird feeling that somebody's watching you, just keep walking. Right. Yep. If, if there's a set, if, if it's a woods that you're familiar with and there's always this one area that just creeps you out, don't go there. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's a reason it creeps you out. It's because you're not wanted there. How about this? The next time you think that that, that part of the woods is creepy – there's a bear in that woods and it's going to eat you the next time you go there. So right. don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> now you can get people going out hunting bear. <laughs> uh, right, right. God damn it. <laughs> yes. But so in summary, we've yeah. talked about all these different theories and ideas about what Bigfoot is, could be, um, it's some scientific evidence the the ridge prints and the tracks, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there was some scientific discovery. There's some scientific backing, mm -hmm. and lots of skeptics. And you know, I'm not saying that every footage that you see on YouTube that shows a Bigfoot is real. I'm gonna say like maybe 10% of them might be real, and I'm saying might. Right. And. The chances are, if it's on YouTube, there's a good chance it's not real. Right. But watch it anyway. Yeah, because it's interesting. Yeah. And it's better than watching fucking TV that's the same old bullshit recycled. Or it's uh, shows it's it's shows from our childhood bastardized for a commercial profit, or we just steal shit from Europe. And right. Japan. Yeah. So, all right. So, yeah. wrapping this up here. Today we talked about Bigfoot. Bigfoot's awesome. This, yes. of course, was the bunny rabbit's hole. I, of course, am Jason. With, of course, of course, a horse is a horse. Of course, I don't know. I'm Craig. <laughs> it's Craig. So, from all of us to all of you, insert tagline here. This <laughs> is the bunny rabbit's hole. I think that is our tagline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right peace out people bye